Welcome to Library Storytime. Our first story today is The Nicest, Naughtiest Fairy. I'm not sure nice and naughty go together. We'll find out in the story. Oh, good, thought the naughtiest ever fairy as a fat little envelope popped through her mailbox. Perhaps someone has sent me a present. But it wasn't a present. It was a letter from all her neighbors, and this is what it said. Dear Naughty Fairy, stop being so naughty. We've had enough of being turned into toads and trolls and wobbly jellies. If you don't stop your naughty tricks, we will drum you out of town. Lots of love from your friends, Giant Big Bad Wolf, the Butcher, the Baker, the Boiled Sweet Maker, the Three Little Pigs, and the Lord Mayor. Oops, thought the na naughtiest ever fairy. She didn't enjoy being drummed out of town, so she decided to be a well-behaved little fairy, starting right away. Hmm. The very noisy giant was busy crashing around, spring cleaning his castle, when the well-behaved naughty fairy arrived. I can help you with that, she shouted above the noise. No, cried the noisy giant. I know your naughty tricks. Don't worry, I'm a well-behaved naughty fairy. She smiled sweetly and waved her magic wand. But although the naughty fairy tried to be good, her magic was determined to be especially naughty. And almost at once, things started to go wrong. Kazam! Paint brushes whizzed through the air, sloshing paint over the walls, the windows, and the giant as well. The vacuum sucked up the trash, the rugs, and just about everything else. Soon it was so full, it exploded in a cloud of dust. Sorry, said the good naughty fairy, and quickly flew off to help somebody else. Mm. That didn't go so well. The big bad wolf was trying to huff and puff a house down. Oh, please let me help, volunteered the good naughty fairy, and summoned up a wind so strong it blew the wolf's clothes right off and sent the house spinning across the valley and far out to sea. Help, shouted the three little pigs who were still in the house. Don't worry, I'm coming, cried the naughty fairy. But on the way, she met someone else who needed her help. <clears throat> the boiled candy maker lived at the top of a steep hill, and he was mixing a huge pot of sweet-smelling candy when the naughty fairy passed by. Don't interrupt me now, puffed the candy man. I have to finish all the candy for the mayor's very important procession. <clears throat> oh, let me help cried the well-behaved naughty fairy. And before the candy maker could shout no, she had waved her magic wand. Oh, dear. Kazam! The pot began to rattle and shake and whoosh! The gooey mixture erupted out of the pot, spilling across the floor. Stop it! cried the candy maker as the sticky mess bubbled out of the door and down the hill but the well-behaved naughty fairy had already gone. All the way down the hill, townsfolk were getting stuck in the mucky mess. The mayor's important procession had been brought to a standstill up to their knees in toffee. Look at them, all stuck in all that candy goo. I should have known it was you, yelled the mayor, shaking his fist at the naughty fairy as she flew by. Soon, the naughty fairy came upon the bold and roaring lion, who was king of the jungle. He was having a royal nap. Ah, he's sleeping like a baby, said the helpful fairy. I'll just make him a little more comfortable. She waved her magic wand and, kazam, the mighty king of the jungle awoke to find himself dressed in a baby's bonnet and diaper rocking in a crib. How embarrassing, he roared. Just you wait. Mm. 
but by now the naughty fairy had flown out to sea to help the three little pigs whose house was still bobbing about on the waves. Fairy to the rescue, she cried, waving her magic wand. Kazam! A huge and hungry whale leaped out of the sea and gobbled up the pigs and their house in one mouthful. Up through the clouds it swam, turning and somersaulting and emitting polite little burps. A house is a substantial meal after all, even for an enormous whale. Come back, called the good naughty fairy, waving her magic wand. Ka-splash! The whale belly flopped into the village pond. Oof, gasped the whale as the little pig's house shot out of his mouth. Pond water and pond life rained down on the town. Mrs. Munchet, the school teacher, was covered in slime and weeds and tadpoles. The baker's magnificent cake for the mayor's procession was drenched in pond water. And the last of the fiery dragon's fiery breath was snuffed out in the downpour. This is one of the naughty fairy's tricks, they sputtered. Oh no, cried the well-behaved naughty fairy, desperately waving her magic wand as it rained frogs and salamanders. But... Her naughty magic turned one of the frogs into her naughty new friend, who was delighted to see the mess the naughtiest ever fairy had made. <laughs> Look at that. They're twins, boys and girls. <laughs> Those poor frogs. All the townspeople marched up to the well-behaved naughty fairy. What a state. They were covered in slime, and toffee and duckweed. The naughty fairy couldn't help but giggle. Are you responsible for this mess? demanded the mayor. It's not my fault, complained the well-behaved naughty fairy. I've been good, but my magic was naughty. Clean this mess up, ordered Mrs. Munchet. And no magic or I'll turn you into a sausage, added the naughty new friend. Ignoring the naughty new friend, the well-behaved naughty fairy waved her magic wand to start the big cleanup. But, mm, what do you think's going to happen now, boys and girls? Kapow! That's not fair, grumbled the naughtiest ever sausage as she started the long task of mopping up. In the future... I'm going to stay naughty. It's safer. <laughs> oh, dear. That poor little fairy. That's the end. And this little fairy says, Are you naughty too? <laughs> oh, dear. What a mess. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're going to change gears and have Miss Lisa talk about some animals. <laughs> All right, so we've got a book called Giraffe Problems. Now that fairy had some problems. Let's see what kind of problems this giraffe is going to have. <clears throat> I feel bad about my neck. I do. I can't help it. It's too long, too bendy, too narrow, too dopey, too patterned, too stretchy, too high, too lofty, lofty, too necky. Yes, my neck is too necky. Everybody stares at it. This guy does, that guy, him, them, her, whatever this is, her again. <laughs> They're all staring at that poor giraffe. Oh my, yep, I feel bad about my neck. I've tried dressing it up. I've added a scarf, two scarves, a bundle of scarves, a mountain of scarves. I've tried bow ties and regular ties and both. What do you think, boys and girls, does that help? <laughs> does that help his neck? 
I have tried hiding it away. I've used shrubs. I've dug out ditches. I've stood behind trees. Do we even see them? <laughs> right there. I have spent time in the river. Other animals have necks that just, hmm, they just work. Take a gander at this zebra's neck. The stripes always look good. It's so classic. Quit staring at me. <laughs> or gaze upon this elephant's neck. Strong and powerful yet graceful. Stop talking about me. <laughs> or glimpse this lion whose neck is adorned with a glorious mane, flowing locks. What a sight. How inspiring. Why can't I have a neck like that? Are you always this loud? The lion says. My mom always says I should be proud of my neck. She said other animals would love to have a neck like this. Yeah, right. No offense, mom. Nobody wants a neck like this. It's a neck that only a mother could love. <laughs> it makes me want to hide until the sun sets. Look what he did with his neck. <laughs> Jeez. Look what he's doing. Oh, good evening. Hmm. I've been admiring your neck from afar. Oh, I wish my neck looked like yours. I'd get so much done in a day. Goodness, I can only imagine all that reaching and grabbing and looking around I do. I'd accomplish many of my goals for sure. Meanwhile, I'm saddled with this little excuse for a neck. So the turtle doesn't like his neck either, huh? Here, watch me try to stretch it out. Uh, ugh. See, that's about as far as it goes. Pathetic, right? I'm basically neckless. Oh, poor turtle. You feel bad about your neck, too? Yep. Huh? Oh, I'm Cyrus, by the way. I'm Edward, and it's lovely to meet you, Cyrus. Can I tell you something else, Edward? Of course, Cyrus. What do you think he's going to tell him? <laughs> <coughs> he's about to make a speech. There is a hill in the distance, which you can surely see from your great advantage. I have stood on that very hill for seven straight days now, staring skyward, watching as a single piece of fruit, a lone banana, slowly change from green to yellow, ripening. I've endured windy nights and unseasonably brisk mornings with very little sleep as I have waited and waited, hoping against hope that that fruit would drop before me so I could sample its sweetness and nourish myself in the process. Yet day after day I have felt like such a fool as I have stretched my neck toward those greedy branches only to be limited by my own physical shortcomings. That's a big speech for such a little <laughs> turtle. Uh, you want a banana from that tree? That's just what I said. Yes. Look here. Look what the giraffe's doing. Plunk. He's watching. Way up high. Here you go. Wolf. Oh, you did it. You did it. You made it look so easy. Munch, 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 munch. Mmm, delectable. That's what this banana tastes like. It was worth the wait. Edward, face it, your neck is impressive. It allows you to do amazing things. For instance, you just solved my week long banana dilemma in just 10 seconds. Well, thank you, Cyrus. I think you have a swell neck, too. It's elegant and dignified, and it works well with your shell. Oh, that means a great deal to me, Edward. Say, do you like bow ties, Cyrus? Well, um, I'm not sure, Edward. I have very little experience with them. You look wonderful, Cyrus. As do you, Edward. I feel good about our necks, Edward. Thank you, Cyrus. And for once, so do I. Yes, for once, so do I.
<laughs> so what do you think, boys and girls? That elephant or that giraffe and that turtle made friends, and they both ended up liking their neck. All right, so we know that there are a lot of animals in this world, and many animals have very unique characteristics. So what I'm going to do first is put the animals up here on the board, and as I put them up there, say their names, and be thinking to yourself, what is so special about that particular animal? All right, here we go. Everybody knows what that's called, right? If you said elephant, you are right. Let's put another one up there. Hmm, we don't have those in America, do we? What are those called? If you said camel, you are right. Now, here's the animal from our story. Look at that beautiful giraffe. Now, be thinking about what is special about each of these. Okay. You guys know the name of this animal? Do you know what the baby is called? Hmm, this is a kangaroo. The baby is called a joey. Hey, this one was in our story, too. Look at him. He's doing a big yawn. This is our lion. This guy's sort of funny. Look at that. <laughs> That's a monkey. Here's another animal. We'll put him down here. Do we know what this one is? It's our panda bear. This is another one we don't see too often. Boys and girls, you know what this guy is? You said porcupine, you are right. All right, what about this one? It's one that most people don't like. That's a snake. And then here we have another animal that was in our story, right? There's the turtle. And then I'm going to put this one here. He was in our story too, right? The, uh, the zebra. <laughs> and here's one of the most hated animals of all, a skunk. All right, so now I'm going to ask you a question. And I want you to tell me which of these animals have that particular um, characteristics. Okay, so let's start with this one. Which of these animals up here Swing from a tree. Mm, take a look at all of them. Which one swings from the tree? I hope you said the monkey. It's the only one that actually swings. Other ones have things to do with trees, but this is the one that swings from a tree. All right. Which one of these animals doesn't have any legs? Mm, take a look. We can see legs in most of these pictures, right? Not all of them. Just because the pictures don't have the legs doesn't mean the animals don't have them. Which one doesn't have any legs, boys and girls? If you said the snake, you're right. All right, which animal has a trunk? Take a look. Can we find the trunk in all these animals? Which animal has the trunk? You said the elephant. This part right here, boys and girls, is called the trunk. And it eats and drinks with that. It helps put it up into its mouth. All right, this is an easy one because I just read you a story about it. Which animal has the longest neck of all? Right here, here's Mr. Giraffe. Big, long neck. So he can see and reach things from the top of a tree. All right, this one might be a little hard because it's about what they eat. Do hmm. you know what all these animals eat? That might be hard. Which one eats bamboo? Hmm. Take a look. Which one? Is, bamboo is a plant. Sort of lives in the bamboo and eats the bamboo. If you don't know already, boys and girls, it's the panda bear. They eat bamboo. All righty, which one is the loudest when it comes to the sound it makes? Which one roars really loud? It also has the name King of the Jungle. You see which one roars? Be funny if this was the one that roared, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's our lion, right? The lion does that roar. All right, which one of these has a pocket? I've already sort of alluded to it because it's where they keep their babies. 
Right? You see right here? Animals with a pocket is called a marsupial. So this is our kangaroo. And there's the little baby, the joey, inside of its pocket. Pretty neat. Not any other of these animals have a pocket. All right. Which one is smelly? Ooh, yick. Stink, stink, stink. Which one smells the worst? In fact, it's a defense that the animal has. When another animal tries to come upon it to scare it, it lifts its tail and squirts out this awful smell. Do you know which one it is? Which one has that stinky, stinky smell? Hopefully you know it's the skunk. Hopefully you don't know it by actually living through it because it's not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that skunk smell on you at all. <clears throat> okay, there's a couple other ones that we haven't talked about yet. Which one has a shell? Okay, and that one was in our story as well. Right here's our turtle. He's got this big hard shell and that's also his defense. When something tries to come and get it, it sticks its head right up inside there so it's protected. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, we've only got, I think, three more. Which one has a hump? That one's pretty easy to see by looking at the pictures, right? Right here, this is our camel, and the camel has the hump. All right, which one has pointy quills? Super, super sharp, pointed quills that is also used as a defense against its predators. So if something is coming to try to attack it, it will ball itself out and and you spring those quills right off its back into whatever is chasing it. So here's our porcupine. You do not want to be on the back end of this guy either. <laughs> you do not want those quills <clears throat> sticking in you. That would hurt. All right, there's only one left. Which one haven't we talked about? Which one is beautifully striped with black and white? So that's our zebra. So a lot of people have always wondered, is it a white animal with black stripes? Or is it a black animal with white stripes? I don't think we'll ever know the answer to that question, Miss Kim. <laughs> Maybe not. Probably not. So there's some animals that have very unique characteristics, just like the giraffe did on the story I read to you. All right, Miss Kim. All right, Miss Lisa. Well, I think that was a lot of fun to look at all those animals, kind of like a little guessing game. We have one more story. Remember that animal, boys and girls? We know what an elephant is, don't we? But what would you do if an elephant stood on your foot? So this tells us what to do when an elephant stands on your foot. If an elephant stands on your foot, keep calm. Panicking will only startle it. He's trying to stay calm, isn't he, boys and girls? Look at him. Never mind. These things happen. Ow! In the event of startling an elephant, you will probably feel like running away rather quickly. Try not to, because running may attract tigers. Mm. Well, he's running. So I expect we're going to see a tiger on the next page. <laughs> yep, told you so. Shh. Once a tiger has spotted you, you must stay silent. Okay. Do you think he's going to be brave and stand there and not say a word? <laughs> I don't think I could. The slightest sound, such as a sneeze, uh-oh, getting ready to sneeze. Achoo! Oh, dear. As I was saying, make the slightest sound and rhinoceroses will hear you. If, I, if a rhinoceros has heard you, whatever you do, oh, my, what is the advice here? I'm not sure his advice is working out very well. Do not be tempted to climb a tree. Oh, for goodness sake. Go ahead then if you must. But don't say I didn't warn you. Mm. He's going to climb that tree. See? Snakes live in trees. And do they do not take kindly to visitors. Having found yourself in a snake's tree, take a few deep breaths and steady yourself. That's it. 
Now, sit right tight and try not to make any sudden movements. Yeah, I'm going to sit real still in a tree if there are snakes there. No, nope, not me, and I don't think he will either, boys and girls. Uh-uh, like that one, you ninny. Sudden movements do not go unnoticed by crocodiles. Everybody knows that. Look at those crocodiles. He's got his tongue hanging out, looking at that guy coming. Mm-mm-mm. Honestly, you are hopeless. If you've been noticed by a crocodile, don't expect me to help you. <laughs> and he's right there and he's saying, please. <laughs> that crocodile doesn't look very good right now, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. Help! Oh, all right then, since you asked so nicely. Wave your arms around and shout for help. Is it working? Hmm. Yes! Here come the monkeys! Of course, now that the monkeys have arrived, there's only one thing to do. I wonder what that is. Sometimes these pages get hard to turn. Go nuts! Jump up and down, run around and around, sing and shout and dance and swing, and have a banana! Yep, he's got his banana. Oh, he feels good now. Wonder what happens now. And finally, before you return to your nice, safe home, now all those animals are looking. Look at them. Every one of them. Oh, and the monkeys are following him. And look where the snakes are all curled around the chimney. Ooh. We're going to our nice, safe home here. Uh. Remember your manners. Thank the monkeys for rescuing you. And don't forget to apologize to the elephant. Just be careful not to... Mm. Startle it. Hey, sorry! And look at that elephant. You think he startled it? Mm -hmm. I think he did. Don't startle that elephant because he's going to chase you. Uh-oh. I think he just needs to get away from all the animals. He's having lots of problems. Well, we've learned a lot about animals and what not to do if an elephant stands on your foot today. <laughs> Some things are real true things and other things are not so real true. Okay, so, well, I hope you had fun. I did, and I think Miss Lisa probably yep. did too. Sure did. But we hope you have a great day. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>